The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, the 8th of November. Uh, we're looking at the Dow up 147 at 43,874. I just want to discuss for a moment what happened yesterday. We had this huge Marboza candle. That's a huge candle, green or red, doesn't matter which color. But what happens is it has no wicks. Oh, I, I actually exclude that factor. I say that it can have a tiny wick, but basically you've got this huge body of the candle. And there are three scenarios that I look at. If it's on the upside, either there's a, a, a follow-through gap to the upside and it's a spectacular second session, that is a second session after that big uh, um, move, and usually it occurs off a, off a bottom where you're coming from a low that is going to turn into something fairly substantial. So that's the one scenario, and that's really positive, and then it just continues higher. The second scenario is exactly what we saw yesterday. There's this tiny, see this candle here, this tiny little doji candle right there. Uh, look at the, 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 besides the gap, look at the huge expanse for that green candle on uh, Wednesday. And then look at Thursday's tiny little doji candle. And that's the scenario, the second scenario is that there's a tiny little candle and then the next day, there might be a little pop to the upside, but then there's a certain, there's a turnaround, and that by the end of the session, there's a there's a red candle, and then you might have a follow through red candle the next day, but the weight, the power, the momentum, of this initial up thrust continues after that. So, I would also say to subscribers to my opening calls, a chart I show subscribers every single day. It's not the background. It's not all these other things. It's this particular series of three panels. This is a daily chart of the Dow with nine period moving average in the 14, the green and pink lines, and the Chapman Wave notation. Plus, I always put in whether there's a Chapman Roman candle or whatever. Then, the next chart is the same chart, the daily chart, but it has automated Chapman Wave support and resistance levels. Look at this cyan color, uh, very light blue um, support levels typed in automatically. And this one also has the MACD, the slow stochastic on balance volume, and the 914 period moving average, and the notation. And then at the top, you can see 44,768.73 is the automated uh, resistance level that's typed in. Then I have the 120 minute chart. What I said in the 120 minute chart is that it made a peak C. There should be a we're always anticipating the Chapman Wave methodology. The rule is, and I'm having a webinar and discussing these different things on Thursday coming up. It's called sectors and stocks for the next market phase. Sector rotation should continue as new groups rally. We've already been seeing that. Former out of favor, big losers are becoming winners. We're beginning to see that. So if you sign up for my newsletter, you're already starting to get these positions even before that Thursday webinar. And then, of course, after that, we'll still follow through. Uh, analyzing weekly time frames because those weekly charts, that's what we want to look at right now, what's happening in the weekly charts because that's giving us the intermediate term picture. Um, and then just demonstrating the critical 914 period moving average for how that works, the crossovers, and the Chapman Wave technical tools of importance in this next phase. So what did we do? We did go to that D. I'm just going to grab this here. Oh, and what I've also got is that there's a very high reading in the uh, trend, and that says that the S&P futures should have some kind of a rally overnight Sunday, maybe into uh, Monday, and that could even come from lower down, but there'll be some kind of a rally in the futures, the S&P that is. And then this chart here, remember what I was looking at? I said, look at this. Uh, this is the, the Dow weekly chart, two red candles, and whoosh, look at this huge green candle. This is the S&P, two red candles, whoosh, big green candle. Uh, same thing for the SMHs, even though the SMHs have been lagging. And right now, uh, the SMHs are they're down at 258. We can, oh, this is sorry, this is the NDX. The, the SMHs, I was going to say, that's unusual. I thought it was still, they were stalling. Yeah, you can see the SMHs are stalling. And look at this massive move in the IWM. 
And one of the reasons why I've been along the IBM and it's been doing very well is because I've been talking about the relationship of the S&P 500. These are really large cap stocks. And then the small cap stocks at 2000, they should play catch up very much like uh, the swings that we saw in, the, in gold and silver as they chase one another up. Then they both come together to the upside, run out of steam, and then they take a, a breather. And this is the catch up phase in the IWM. All right, I'm done with this particular chart. And um, let's, so let's go to this. Now, the weekly chart is a technique that I developed years and years ago called the Chapel Wave Instant Restart. Within three bars, if there is a move higher than peak, uh, um, oh, I put that in the wrong place. Sorry, I meant to put it over here. If there is a higher high above D, then we get the technique that I, uh oh, why is it not moving? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, we get the technique I call the Chapel Wave Instant Restart, meaning that at that point, you can start counting parallel peaks to the, to the, E, it goes E slash A, F goes F slash B. And that's really important. But there's another technique that I haven't been able to discuss yet because I wanted to see what happened this week. And that is when you go to an E and then the peak and decline from E goes below the previous peak, I circle that and I say, okay, Th that says that at some point when this is complete, there's a chance that you're going to come down and go all the way back, in this case, to the low 42,000s. I'm just keeping that in abeyance right now to say, let's do one thing at a time. Everything at this point is pointing towards this cluster formation being a, a spring-loaded move to the upside. I think everything points to this as an A, and that means you can't get a peak D. That's the objective always, to go to at least a D until about two weeks' time. All right, with that said, let's get on with the show and we'll go straight to, let me run this quickly, S&P right now, the S&P is up at all-time highs, up at 10, up 10.92 at 59.84, high so far is 59.92.44, and here you've got the alternate count, GCSC going to D, that's really important, and you've, for the third week, third month, I mean, you've, out of five months, one, two, three, four, five, four of them have been way over the green line. That's the outside extension of the travel wave inside track repellent zone. That's really important. And there's an instant restart right here. So, so far, that's all pointing to positive action. QQQ, I'm going backwards, leg D, leg, leg D in the monthly chart. We were waiting and waiting for that. Finally got it, all-time high. Leg C in the weekly chart. And this is either an A or an F, and I'm putting that in because up until I'm absolutely sure, and I'll only be sure by about Tuesday or Wednesday of next week what this is, I'm calling this a, a spectacular move with two really strong gaps to the upside. Now, I've been asked about gaps. This initial gap, the gap from Wednesday to Thursday, that doesn't have to be filled for a long time. It doesn't even have to be filled. You can go into the gap, you don't have to fill the whole thing. But after that, the next gap is the one that you start to look at and say that becomes support. So now we've got support at about 508 in the uh, QQQ on any sudden uh, move to the downside. I'll be back in a moment. Bowser Trap and Tiger Ignition Zawa. And there's a lot to discuss and questions have come in. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, question, can I look at Kang, C-H-A-C-A-N-G, yes, C-A-N-G, I don't know if I've ever seen that, I usually remember symbols very well. Kang is Kang Inc., that doesn't tell me anything, K-Y-K-V, all right, it's a foreign company, uh, I'm just, I don't care what it is, it's trading at $3.63, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E pulls back, A, B, C, D. Um, with a gap to the upside, very nice. And the uh, weekly chart is leg A, goes to peak A and peak B. Monthly chart, huge A, and then it pulls back. So you've got to count. This is your starting point. So every peak is counted. That's an A, that's an A. That's a B, C, and a D. So question is, just looking at the chart, obviously it looks a little overextended. I don't know what the gap up is, unless it's earnings. Most importantly, what happened is the nine-period moving average um, is very strong. The price is way above the nine. Nine's way above the fourteen. But if you look at the uh, the relative strength index, it got a little overbought about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, and now it's getting overbought again. And uh, that's just a signal. But that the distance between the nine period differential and the MACD and the slow moving average, the twenty six period moving average, that is at a top. So that means it should pull back. It doesn't mean to say the price has to pull back correspondingly, but it says that it's getting a little toppy and the on-balance volume is very toppy. So what I'm going to suggest is take a little bit off if you have it. If you, I, I'm sure you have it, otherwise you wouldn't be asking uh, me about it. Oh, this one from China. All right, it is a China stock, Chinese company. Um, all I can say is that this is where, this is a typical example of where the gap this gap should be filled as a gap between two, um, two, it's about 296 or so, I think 296, and today's low of 327. It doesn't have to fill the whole gap, but the price should get back into the gap. At any point, it depends on what happens on Monday. If this gap's up again and gets to the fours, that's, this is a completely different story. But if it stalls and starts to pull back right now, we're not even an hour into the session. It looks like a Chapman Wave Roman candle. But it's got a whole day to go. Anything can happen. What I am saying is that at any point, if this pulls back and and has an hour, one hour trading under 340, 
there's a real good chance it'll test today's low 327. If it takes that out from the chart pattern itself, I don't think it's going to break 314. That's on the very short term. Over a period of two, three weeks, I would not be surprised if you come back into the threes and you actually struggle a little bit. But right now, it's fantastic. Money management says, take a little bit off, let it run. I'll explain what the take a little bit off is. Uh, I think there's a stock I could use, one of our positions. Um, but yes, so yes, I like the chart very much. Monthly chart had a move into the 16 or 16 and a half area. Back when it was an IPO, a month later, it goes from the 380 into the, uh, what did I say, 15, 14 area. I wouldn't be looking at that right now. What I would look at is this candle right here, that little peak of the uh, of July of 2021. Wow, 2021 uh, at 404. That's really the key. If it closes over 404 on a weekly basis, it's established a trend that says any move down should find really good support in the threes. Hope that helps you. I'll be right back. Am I hearing music? Dow's up 212, S&P's up 17. I'll be right back. Oh, am I not hearing the music? Uh, was that music? Uh, maybe not. All right. Um, <laughs> there was some fuzziness there. All right, let's continue, and uh, someone will let me know. So I want you to go through gold quickly. Look, gold is pulling back. It's down nine. It's just uh, digesting huge gains. Is this a major sell signal? I don't have any clues. I have a very short-term sell signal going. Go, uh, maybe by the end of the day, goes to a sell mode. Uh, if you're looking at the GDX, GDX has pulled back pretty sharply from the 44 level down to the 37s, and now it's trading at 38. That looks to me like uh, it's got a little bit of a problem. That's the gold stocks themselves. So I, I would say this is a, a period for gold and silver, a, a timeout that's well-deserved. Looking at the dollar, the dollar right now is up uh, 40 ticks, uh, did a really nice spike to the upside. Now, it mustn't take out 103.33 because that's a, that would be really negative action short term. But look at the weekly chart. Look at this powerful indicator that I do. This channel wave inside track repellent zone. Now, look, the price goes up. It stalls, tries to go up again. And all I can say is that the dollar on a monthly basis says, hey, ho-hum, it's just in a trading band between the 102 area and 105, maybe 106. But it's just there. And that's a good sign, I think. And we remain along the dollar from 2018. <laughs> Let me just get back to um, uh, what I want to look at here because uh, I didn't do Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin doing right now? Bitcoin is uh, down 100, uh, 205. It made a leg D right there. We've been very positive, uh, Bitcoin. And looking at this cup and handle formation, saying that there should be a leg D to come. This is a continuous contract, so the price might change. But the high that was made in March, I've got 79,000.020. It should go to 021 at least. That'll start leg D. All right. And as, I, as I'm looking at this, I don't know. Am I hearing music or not? No. No. Um, Am I hearing things? So that's very positive. And this weekly chart um, has another two weeks to go before it takes out that left side high. And that's the high of, as I said, March, the week of the 15th at 79,020. So we'll see if that's going to come about. And there's a really strong support at 73,200 at this particular time. Uh, next thing I want to look at. Yeah, so um, I did that, did that, did that. Bonds. TLT, trying its best to turn around because you can see this weekly chart. That's a nice candle. And I've spoken about this earlier in the week. I said, in my work, if I get a left side, right side price tie match with an, uh, either an arch or a cup formation, if I do that and then the price doesn't get there but is still on the way, in this case down, very often it goes past the left side low of importance in, that, in this case, it's the low of the uh, 24th of July, 91.47. And very soon after that is the first attempt to really break to the upside. So here you've got something that I call a cluster formation. See this conglomerate of price movement 
uh, that's been going on for about a week and a half. If the bonds, if the TLT is able to close any day, fill their gap and close at 94.23, it's at 92.63 right now, 53 up a dollar 21. That'll be the first sign that says now the nine period moving average can finally cross positive. The bank D is already struggling, but it's turned positive. But the histogram is <laughs> it's just barely up. And the uh, rent of strength has improved a lot. And the stochastic has been improving. This is exactly the place where I'd be looking for some decent kind of uh, rally attempt that becomes at least a buy signal. And then we'll see if it goes to a buy mode in the TLT. And that corresponds to the TBT, which had a, a, a peak E. Ah, there's the music. I wonder what that fuzziness was that I heard. That must have been my earphones. E, a peak E in the 35s, and now it's down to 33.24. And the 9 period moving average hasn't crossed negative yet, but the MACD has. Yes, yes, yes. This is the bank index. Is up to I'll be back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. So, uh, Ben, in the Tiger YouTube, could you tell me what the symbol is you're looking at for the soybeans? I've got the soybeans continuous contract, and I've got this as a leg B, and I can just tell you exactly what I'm looking at here, and I can give you a time sequence for it as well. So, uh, trading right now, you might be looking at a different symbol altogether, but I'm just looking at S as a symbol at 1,018 and a quarter, down eight. So it made a peak D. Uh, the, the price moves around because it gets uh, smoothed out, but the, nothing, none of, nothing else changes other than the price. The na notation, the chaff wave, nothing. So that made a peak D back in uh, early November, beginning of October, up in the uh, 1080 area, and then it came tumbling down and went to a low of uh, in October the 30th. It went to 977 and a quarter. So the MACD started moving up, the relative strength is up, stochastics up, and the on balance volume is up, and the nine period moving average uh, acted well. So I'm looking at this, and your question is any chance of looking at January 25 soybeans? So uh, Z, uh, let's see. Z I Z S F. Am I looking? Just, just tell me. Are you able to? Is this? Can I base this on the soybeans themselves? Are they the continuous contract? Just put it a yes or a no, because then I'll go to your your. I don't, I don't get the. Say Z S F. Let me just try that. Z S F. Twenty five. Let me see if I can get anything. No, I don't. So I just I don't know how on trade station. I'm not sure how to get the symbol you want. Okay, that's good. Okay, so what I'm looking at here, and I'll tell you the ifs, because there's no guarantee here. And you're looking all the way into January. You're looking at the, almost the uh, transition day for the presidency. So let me just go to this, and I'm saying, all I would look at is this. If soybeans, and let's go one step at a time. We can do this again next week. But in, what I'm looking at right now is if soybeans gives back yesterday's candle and goes under 1,006 that's that's a problem. But if it's if on Tuesday or Wednesday, let's just say this is the high of the day, so it's got a peak B. If at any point it's able to close above 10.36, I'd probably say 10.37 is much better. Next week, that'll start, I think, leg C, and that'll be a confirmation you've gone from a buy signal to a buy, buy mode. The buy mode implies it should go to at least a D. And you've got this dreaded H pattern right here that is becoming so far a successful cup formation if the price is able for two out of three sessions to close. And I'm using this continuous contract uh, above the high of the 24th, which was at 1,024 and a quarter. If for two out of three sessions is able to close above that, that's that's not a guarantee, but that's really an 85% chance that you've now got a buy mode and you should go higher. And the target I would have is this candle right here, the candle of the 8th of January of October that had a high of uh, 10.39. And 10.39 gets you into this chapter. We've inverted candle into the 10.50. So I'm looking at that as a potential. Why? Because in the, here we go. And in the weekly chart, you've got this H pattern, the dreaded H pattern, and you need to be building strength now. You, you don't have time to go down at all. You have only time to go up. You go down and you just stuck sideways. That's the reason why I'm saying it's really important to hold. I'll make it a thousand. Mustn't close under a thousand in the next week. But if it doesn't and it starts to move, it can get to 1070 is the 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly. My eye and the technicals are suggesting that that would be a target over the next three weeks. I'm looking at a weekly chart. That's, I think, let's go one step at a time. So that's what I'm looking at. Remember, it's all based on holding a closing price of 1,000. Goes under 1,000, you're just stuck in the sideways uh, action. Hope that helps you. Now, I mentioned how important these peak Ds. Look, there's your peak D in the daily chart. There's your peak D in the monthly chart all the way back to uh, somewhere around July of 2023 up in the 1400s. And that's so important. Well, we were looking for a peak D, and I use this example for many reasons. I'm also going to use it as an example of, I, I type in, usually I remember to do that, I type in when an earnings announcement is going to be made. I usually say, I don't really care if, if the price has done so well. I'll mention it. We might have taken off a little bit 
going into the earnings report. But if it's done well and I like the stock, I don't really care. Even if it gets smacked down like Hood, we have, we've had a fantastic run from the 16s in uh, Robin Hood all the way to the 28s and the 29s and then a pullback. Then there, were the, uh, there was the earnings report and a pullback. So the same thing here with Solventum. I even typed in right here. It says 11624 to 11824 earnings report, and I completely forgot about it. But I said to subscribers this morning, I said it's gone to a peak C. If it goes above 76.05, there's a Solventum Corporation Healthcare spin off of Triple M. If it can go above 76.05, at 7606, take something off because we have a core position from the uh, from way down here in the 57s. We've taken a little bit off, then we went all the way to 73.40. It pulled back. I said, let's add back the, what we took off and or people that are getting in and get a new position. So we added back in around about the 67 area and went to a sudden spike to 76.05 on news that there might be something that they'll split off. Then it pulled back and it just went sideways. We took a little bit off before. We took a little, and I said today, to take some off. And then I'm looking at the candle. I said, oh, great. Good call, mister. And then I look and it's gone red. And now I am looking, I checked it out. Did, yeah, last night was earnings or yesterday was earnings. So we got the benefit of that and it's still looking great. So it's having a sell the news, buy the rumor, sell the news, pulling back. This is still on our list. And at 73 is still way up from where we bought it. Uh, not the initial time. That's way, way, way up. But it's way up from this trading position. Now I, ha now I have to, now for subscribers, we have to handle this trading position as carefully as possible uh, because it's got the D, it's achieved everything we wanted and it's a leg E in the weekly chart. It's an IPO at 96.05 back in March, the high was the high, tumbles down to 47, gets to cut in half and now it's gone from 47 to today's high of 77. I would say 30 points, you deserve a bit of a break. So it should have a bit of a break. I also want you to talk about it in terms of chat wave inside, so, sorry, this is the instant restart that I said because this leg E slash A is just so long, it's so strong, if there's no instant restart, I think it'll go to an E or an F and then pull back because it negates that potential of having a brand new buy mode going to A, B, C, D. So it stalls at E, comes down, and now it's gone to a brand new peak A, peak B, that was gray. Now it's blue C and a blue D, meaning you've achieved your goal in a chapter way methodology of getting to a D, fourth highest peak. Okay, I just wanted to go through that. We've had some very nice positions here. Um, and this is a period right at this moment that I have to do an assessment over the weekend to say, is this the rocket ship takeoff? And how, how much will any pullback go? I said to subscribers, if there's a 500 point decline in the Dow between now and Tuesday, I have to reconsider that this looks fabulous so far. And the positions that we've got are doing well, so we can't complain. I'll be Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, so here, this is a short section. I want to go through a lot. A lot of questions came in. Yeah, so, um, and, and I agree in the, in the tag YouTube, I can't remember where it was. Yes, the IWM is really uh, very strong in terms of the relationship to its own uh, patterns. This is one of the strongest it's been. So FXI made that doji candle uh, at, in the 37s back in early October, pull back. And I said, yeah, I, I think it's this is a serious move. We've seen this before where you go sideways after a sharp move up. It does make higher highs and higher lows going back to the previous high. And you can see that uh, the FXI iShares China large cap ETF pulled back sharply down $1.80 at 31.60. And... This right now has got a peak D. It just says it's stuck in a range. It's not bad. It's just not doing anything. Stuck. Stuck is a, is a, is a technical term. You look it up under S, page 23 of the book. Um, yeah. So uh, XPV, I said, I'll do that, XPV. And I, I said, um, I drew this out. Oh, I haven't even updated it. I drew this out, and I didn't even follow it. I had it going to yesterday as a test of the left side high back in the 1380, what was that, 1373 level from the, uh, October the 2nd. I had the cup formation. I had the plumb line saying that there should be a match to the, what day was that, to the 7th. It should try to test that. I had a champion wave inside wedge target resistance line going to uh, 13.43 yesterday. What did it do? It spiraled right up to the 14.69, uh, and today it's down nine cents. So it achieved everything. It's in leg E, probably making a peak. It might need a little bit of a rest, but that was the target. And you finally got, I mentioned this, that there should be a leg D, remember, in the weekly chart, and there it is. So that's it. And now that now the XP, uh, XPeng, XPEV at 14.13 down nine cents. Uh, this is a leg, a brand new peak A, peak, great peak B because it's under the previous B. In the monthly chart, it looks, looks horrible, but you start to see some improvement. That's a good sign. Okay, next question came in. Uh, whoops, let me look at where, where did I write it? Yeah, could I look at P PLTR? Where is it now? PLTR had a spectacular earnings report. Wonderful, wonderful move. I had mentioned to uh, people who had asked me about it, I said, just money management says, take a little bit off. It's looking fabulous. So I, I can't say whether it's a, a leg F or a leg B to the upside, but as long as all the technicals are, are looking good, I would just use that as money management. Please don't get out of the whole position. This is Pal Palantir Technologies, developed state of fusion platforms, whatever it is, they're in the sweet spot, the market, and, and fund managers are loving it. Yes, you could get cut into this 50 area halfway of the, of the 
a huge candle closing out this week in the weekly chart. That would be your support. Usually the 45 round number, you could come back and test that over a period of time, the breakout. Uh, but this is this is really great. I, I, all I can say is on the upside, um, this is all time high, isn't it? Yep, all time high. So you don't know. I can only do measured moves to the upside. I have to use different technology, different uh, instrumentation, different techniques to do that. I don't really want to do it right now other than to say that my eye says that between 58 and 61 over this particular phase, that's going to be strong resistance. That's just my eye. It's not the way that, that Palantir hasn't heard me say that. It just it's got its own momentum. I just want to talk about the support, the little gap from the other day. Yeah, maybe in the uh, 53s, probably a worst case basis on the very short term. But so far, it's acting very well. So just money management, take something off and raise your stop on a little part of it. You take something off and part of it says I've got a, a, a wide running stop, a rolling stop. And that's very important. Question came in about V, V, V I C R V I C R. I think I've skipped someone's question. Oh, I'll get to that. All right, I'll get to that as well. Yeah, almost the same pattern. Beautiful move of of I call. I, I looked that up and now I can't remember what it is. I remember it was a, in a very important sector. The market says, are you kidding? It's very important. Trading at fifty nine up a dollar eighty three. I like this very much. This could actually be a brand new move to the upside. I'm calling it for now. Uh, yeah, I, it really doesn't look like an F. It looks more like this is an F right there. I'm just continuing the sequence. I'll try to do a little bit more on Monday, but I don't want to do this before we run out of time. It's acting very well. The MACD's nine period differential says it's becoming overbought together with the on balance volume. So once again, take a little money, money money off as money management. The 200 period moving average in the weekly at 54 is your major support. I, I'm calling this at least for now a leg E. There's nothing to do there. There could be an instant restart even, although it's much higher than usual for the three bars, well, there's two bars above D. Uh, yeah, I like it. And the monthly chart finally is really improving. Looks horrible, but it is improving. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the month it turns L, meaning the nine period moving average. Finally, uh, ever since 2022, when it went negative in the monthly chart after the peak D, uh, top that was made back in 21 in the 160s, and then it goes down, can you believe it, to 30? Wow. Okay, so I like it very much. Congratulations on your purchase there. Next question came in. Let me just see if I've got this right. I've got that. I did that. Can we look at FNMA? Is that Fannie Mae? Fannie Mae. F, 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 N, M, A. If this is Peaky asking the question, then it's probably Fannie Mae something. Yep, Federal National uh, Mortgage Association trading at 2.26, up 0.19. Now, you've been in this forever, and that's the way to hold this. So A, B, C, D, E. In the monthly chart, try, my target here would be the high that was made back in 2021 in July of 2.50. And you're at 2.26. It doesn't sound like much, but believe me, that's a big percentage. It's up 10% today, just being up 0 0.19, 0 0.19 cents. So peak A, B, C, D. I am calling this a peak D for now. No, I think I missed one. I think I missed it. No, I didn't. 1.1501, yeah. So this is a peak A. Let me just put that in there. There we go. Okay, yeah. So as I'm finishing this up and we're about to go to a break, I'm going peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. I'm calling this for now peak E. And the weekly chart, brand new move. This is an A. That's a B. Right there, and that's a C. All right, this is still acting very, very well. Now, 2, 2.01 to 1.85. That's your major support in the next in, throughout November. So just watch that closely. So I hope that helps you. Very good action there, and congratulations on your entry point. Um, yes, okay, I like that. Congratulations on a really great trade on Palantir S&P. Uh, we've got that break coming up. 
and I just have to go to the tiger to me. There it is. Okay, so the the den, a couple of questions and I will get back. As soon as I get back, I want to do a quick overview of what I'm looking at with today's action. What is starting to remember? I've got the webinar coming up. I've already subscribers already looking at positions for this next phase. Don't forget, it's three months, almost three months before Trump comes into power. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Just before we uh, finish this uh, segment here, uh, I want you to also mention there's a technique that I spoke about the other day. It's the falling exclamation where you make lower highs and much lower lows, and then all of a sudden you turn around, and especially if it's a very short a uh, couple of bars, that's always a very successful one. That's what we got in the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF AIQ. Now it's gone to leg C. I also wanted to point this out. Every once in a while, it is so rare, the market fails at an all-time high, so whatever price you're following, at a P, B or a C, it just somehow, it just it's so unusual. No other way I could count it. This failed at about 37 back in July, and plummeted to a lower low, which takes out the starting point, and you have to start again. And that was unusual. It couldn't be an H because there's no H in the Chapman Wave methodology. And now you've got a brand new move to the upside, and I fail for subscribers. We've been in this forever uh, from the 28th. Here it is at uh, 38, and it hit uh, 39 the other day, yesterday. But 
most importantly, I wanted to get back in, but we've got so many other positions that I can't complain at all. But this is the intelligence. It's Look, Microsoft is doing nothing. This is the one, the artificial intelligence ETF, because it covers everything and it's doing its all-time highs. I mean, yesterday, it's, it's looking very good. So let me just sum this up. Uh, for the Dow, this is a really important move today to break decisively above the doji. The third thing about, you remember I spoke about the two things. The third thing I forgot to mention, after a huge Merboza candle and a tiny doji following it, is that the next day, the third thing is that it drops immediately. So this is very positive because of what it's saying is that the momentum from the uh, 1,500 points and you still get, I mean, yesterday was unchanged. I didn't even talk about that. It's so rare to get unchanged. Uh, down 0.59 or something, less than a point. When you're at the 43,000s, I'll talk about that Monday. Meantime, the market looks very good, very strong. If any pullback is a buying opportunity. Have a great weekend. Our deepest thoughts to the O'Brien family for this weekend. Uh, we miss him dearly. And we will see you all on Monday. Have a great